talk about my bout with anorexia and bulimia. You know, I thought it was a really important subject because I wrote a blog on it once and it had such an overwhelming response from, you know, women everywhere and some men as well who have been struggling with an eating disorder and could totally relate to my story. So today I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. So my eating disorders started a long, long time ago. And I've just got to say for the record, I do not have one now. I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, you know, high carb, raw vegan, fruitarian, fruit eater, that is an eating disorder. No, it's not. Okay, an eating disorder is when you've got disordered eating, where you feel like binging out all the time. You know, when you feel like starving yourself, when you feel like purging. I don't feel that ever, 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 ever. I'm just going to tell you that. So let's get that out of the way. Because this is a real deal. High carb raw vegan is a real deal. And if you have an eating disorder, it's going to nip it in the butt. You know, you might have some residual mental sort of issues regarding surrounding the eating disorder. But this is going to give you the sugar that your brain needs, the glucose that your brain requires to sort that all out. I mean, it really, really does work. You probably won't know yourself, you know, within a couple of months. But only, only if you look after your basic needs. Like, this isn't going to work if you starve yourself. Okay, if you starve yourself and think, oh my God, I'm putting on a bit of weight, it's early on in this journey and I'm putting on weight, this can't be right, I've got to starve myself. No, it's not going to work. You're just going to get fatter. You're going to be depressed. You're going to stay in that eating disorder cycle, which does people's heads in. So on to my story. Well, when I moved to, I was from the country and, you know, I was from a little fishing town where I was forced to eat fish a lot of the time. I think that's when my eating disorder started because I used to hate it, but I was forced to eat it. It's all right, mum, I've forgiven you for that. I remember it starting when I was young. I was really, really just, you know, I was influenced by the magazines. There was really skinny girls at school and I wasn't fat. You know, when as a child, you know, around the age of um, 11, 12, I wasn't fat, but I was, you know, I was influenced by what was around me. When I moved to the city, I got involved with a guy who was a drug dealer. So I'm going to leave out a few details or else this is going to be so too long, all right? Basically, I got into drugs, taking drugs, and it suppressed my appetite. And I love that because I was looking in the mirror and going, this is working. I'm getting skinnier. And that was my number one goal. That was my whole life. That was my whole life from wake up in the morning to go to bed at night. I was hanging around a lot of other girls who were taking drugs as well. And we were just like, yeah, this is cool pop some ecstasy, snort some speed or some coke, no worries, you know, it's going to get us skinny. Who cares if it's dissolving your organs? It didn't matter at the time. I wanted to be like this and I was getting like that. Throughout the day, you know, I would I'd wake up in the morning, first thing I would go to the ocean pool, which was freezing, and you know, I'd do it all through winter because I was like, ur, ur, must get skinny. <laughs> and I would swim and do my laps there and be freezing. For the rest of the day, basically, I'd be like, oh my god, it's so cold. And I'd have a bite of cereal. A couple of hours later, or maybe five, six hours later, I'd be at the reception desk. I was working in a medical clinic at the time, and I'd be like, you know, just almost dozing off, feeling a little bit like out of it, you know. I was under carb. So I would have a baby buy a sushi roll and have a couple of bites of sushi roll and chuck away the rest. That was my thing. I never finished anything. You know, if I had a meal in front of me, I always had to leave something on the plate or chuck it away. And then I felt like, yeah, you know, I'm in control of the food, you know, I'm in control of what I'm doing and, you know, I was getting this sense of independence and control over my life for once. I remember, I always, it didn't matter if it was shit food, it really didn't matter, as long as I only had a certain amount of that food. You know, I'd walk around in the days and sometimes be so out of it. I remember once I was working in a supermarket and I was serving this lady and I was like, you know, beep, beep. And I just went, Pfft. I passed out. Just totally passed out in front of this woman. And everyone just rushed around. I, when I woke up, there was just like, there's people looking at me going, you all right, you all right? And I'm like, whoa, you know, what just happened? My co-workers had a clue as well because I was getting skinnier and skinnier. And they're like, you need to go and eat something now. That was the sort of state I was in a lot of the time. On the edge of fainting. On the edge of fainting all the time. Not having any ability to focus on anything. The food that I was eating was high in fat, 
and low on carbohydrates, deep fried chicken wings and stuff like that, but I'd only have like five bites and I'd leave the rest. When you're really undercarbed like that, you, you can't think straight. Your mind starts to play tricks on you. It really, really does. And after a while, you know, I'm still taking the drugs and everything. And at first, I was starving myself and starving myself. But then I really binge out like crazy. I mean, like 6,000 calories in a day, six, 7,000 calories of junk food in a day for a couple of days. But I would spew it up. That's where the bulimia would come into it. I felt totally disgusted in myself. How could you do that to yourself? How could you eat that much crap? And it was sort of this angry act, you know, make myself spew, punish myself. After a while of doing that, starving myself, having binge and spewing, it's like I attached so much pain to the vomit aspect that I didn't binge anymore. I just became enervated, so enervated that I just underate the whole time. I was eating about 500 calories a day. And this went on for a good while. I started to get really skinny and I was taking drugs, I was snorting coke and it just got to the point where my mum was worried, everybody was worried about me and I saw a doctor once and he said, you're anorexic, your BMI is anorexic, you've got to do something soon or we're going to have to help you out here. And I was like, help me out? Yeah, what does that mean? It started to scare me because I had a friend who went to a hospital for anorexia and it started to make me think in a different way after that doctor's visit because I always had this real interest in nutrition and I knew what I was, I was doing was not healthy so I, I did want to get out of it. And so in between this time I started to get more into organic food and go to the health food shop all the time, talk to the people there. I started to become more educated about nutrition and one day I was just like, I don't want to take drugs anymore. This is it. I'm not going to take drugs anymore. And I stopped taking drugs. And guess what? Within a couple of months, I'd gained about 10 kilos or so in about, in a year, about 20 kilos. It really just packed on because I stopped taking drugs, which were suppressing my appetite. And I just couldn't stop it anymore. My appetite just was like, whew. it was crazy. I felt insane. Every day I would I would hide myself in my room, in my unit. I had a flatmate, but I'd hide myself in my room and just be binging out. So I was really making up for all that lost time for the years of under eating and taking drugs. So with all this binging came spewing. Mm -hmm. Because I started to feel really guilty because it was just like, what am I doing to my body? And I'm getting fatter. I want to get rid of this extra weight. And the only thing I needed to do was to vomit. So when I started to spew, I was... That's what they want to see. Hey oh, guys. Oh my god, here it is again. Duran Rider's back. Duran Rider's back. I'm watching you. Need to sit a 200k ride. Sit, man. Hardcore. People can turn the video off now, they've seen me. He's got hairy legs too. You've got to man. shave those babies. Shave the muscle. You're not part of the gang anymore. If... No. You need baby smooth legs to be a cyclist. That's I hope right. you know that. That's right. You can tell from now, guys, you've seen me. Go, go, go get your wax kit. Click on one of my videos. Go get, go get your wax kit. Click on my video on the right hand side <laughs> of the screen. So I was, I was vomiting a lot and I couldn't control my appetite any longer. For so long I had controlled it, I'd been like, yeah, I can do this. So I'd absolutely spew everything up. I'll, most of my meals I was vomiting and I really did a lot of damage to my body, really. I lost a tooth, I got a couple of fillings, you know, because the vomit was coming up and dissolving my teeth, basically. I just felt trapped in this cycle of under eating, binging, purging. That's what I was doing, you know, I'd do the purge and then I'd be like, okay, tomorrow's a new day, I can do this, and I had good intentions to start off with, you know, I had good intentions, which means under eating, so I'd eat a couple of hundred calories for breakfast. By lunch, I'd be like, oh, I'm really hungry. So it'd get up to about maybe 600 calories. And then by one time dinner came around, I was like, get out of my way. I just want that food now. I had my special food that I eat all the time because I knew exactly how many calories were in everything. And if someone else ate any, I was just like, oh my God, my system, my, my system has been fucked up. What do I do now? I was just so unbalanced. So to cut a long story short, I became a personal trainer and I started to learn more about being fit and healthy and this helped me so much and I began to get fitter, you know, and feel better about myself. I started to educate myself and then that led me to the raw vegan lifestyle. Once I started to eat a large quantity of fruit, I was like, whoa, I can't believe I feel this good. 
this is amazing. You know, I feel so satiated. And just that feeling of having a meal and just not wanting anything else. You know, not having that feeling of wanting to binge out on a block of chocolate or eat a whole chicken. I went through a stage where I was eating a whole chicken a day. I know, it's disgusting. I was eating a whole chicken a day. I was putting that away. And I felt like crap and I looked crappy. You know, it was a really, really sad way to eat. It was this high protein, paleo style diet, and it really made me ill. I was hardly eating any carbohydrates, and I was just loading up on the, the chicken and the fish and the beef, whatever, just on the meat. I was having chicken livers for breakfast. Mm hmm. Who would want to do that? I remember frying them up, eating one, and going, that is disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And I'm like, okay, I'll just put some salt on it and, you know, I'll put some garlic. So I put salt and garlic and I'm like, oh, that's so bad. And so I put some butter as well and I'm like, oh, yeah, I could probably eat that. That's how bad it was. And I was eating this diet and I was like, what the hell am I eating this for? So anyway, that was just before I found a raw vegan lifestyle. So I was trying all these different diets, all these different fad diets, and none of them were giving me satiation. I was feeling like binging out all the time because my, my brain did not have carbohydrates. I didn't have that glucose going to my brain. So when I found...